So, you poured all that time and effort into a computer science degree. What if I told you that Golden Ticket isn't quite as shiny as it used to be? Just a few years ago, your qualifications would have put you on the fast track to a top tech job. Now? That same resume might not even make it past the first automated filter. Look, the tech job market has definitely bounced back from the recent layoffs, but it's not the same game. It's gotten smarter, tougher, and way more selective. Think of it like a pro sports league. Companies aren't just trying to fill the roster anymore. They're hunting for franchise players, specialists who can win the game by solving very specific, very expensive problems. While your CS degree gets you into the tryouts, it's no longer a guarantee for a top-tier salary. But here's the good news. There are certain skills that companies are desperate for, and they're willing to pay a serious premium to get them. These are the skills that can level up your earnings far beyond what your degree could on its own. Stick with me, and I'll break down exactly what those three skills are, why they're so valuable, and how you can start learning them today. Let's be real, a computer science degree is still a huge asset. It's your passport to the world of tech, it proves you speak the language. But in today's cutthroat tech world, a passport just gets you through the border. The real money, the kind of salary that launches you into a new stratosphere, is tied to skills that act like an all-access VIP pass. These skills solve urgent, high-stakes business problems, because the market pays for tangible value, not just for a piece of paper. We're going to skip the generic just learn to code advice and get into the specializations that are creating the highest paid pros in 2025. These are the roles that companies are pouring money into because their success, and sometimes their survival, depends on them. I'm not just going to list them off, I'm going to give you a clear path to acquiring them. You'll go from being just another applicant with a passport to the one candidate with a VIP pass they can't afford to lose. Advanced AI Specialization, the MLOps Engineer. First up is a skill that goes way beyond just knowing AI. The real money is in a deep, hands-on specialization that most CS programs barely mention, Machine Learning Operations, or MLOps. Think of it like this, a data scientist is a brilliant chef who invents a mind-blowing new recipe, that's your machine learning model. The MLOps engineer? They're the master architect who designs and builds the entire global fast food chain around that one recipe. They build the industrial-grade kitchen, manage the global supply chain, and run quality control to make sure that amazing dish can be served perfectly, identically, and instantly to millions of customers. For the last five years, companies have hired armies of chefs to create incredible AI recipes. The problem? Most of those amazing recipes are now stuck in a notebook on a shelf, never making it into a real product. The biggest bottleneck in AI today isn't creating models, it's productionizing them. That's where MLOps comes in. It's the art of building automated, reliable, and scalable pipelines to deploy, monitor, and maintain machine learning models in the real world. It's the bridge between a cool science experiment and a billion-dollar AI feature. And the people who can build that bridge? They're incredibly rare and fiercely sought after. So why does this skill pay so much? It's simple economics. A company can sink millions into a new recommendation engine, but that investment is worthless until it's reliably serving users. The MLOps engineer is the one who keeps that model from crashing and automates the whole process. They're the guardians of a company's AI investments. This is why median salaries for MLOps engineers are hitting around $160,000, with experienced pros easily clearing $200,000. Other sources show an average of about $125,000, with top earners exceeding $177,000, and even entry-level roles starting near six figures. Here's your roadmap to becoming an MLOps engineer. First, master the fundamentals, your CS degree gives you a huge head start. Next, build the MLOps toolkit. Think of it as an apprenticeship. Start with Docker to create a perfect, self-contained meal kit for your model. Then, learn Kubernetes, which is like the fleet of delivery trucks and pop-up kitchens that can serve that meal kit anywhere, at any scale. After that, you must master C-CD with tools like Jenkins or GitLab C. This is the automated assembly line that builds and ships your meal kits without human error. You'll also need to master a major cloud AI platform, like AWS SageMaker, Google's Vertex AI, or Azure Machine Learning. Finally, and this is the most important part, build something. Take a model, containerize it, build a pipeline, and deploy it. That hands-on project is what separates a knowledgeable candidate from a true MLOps engineer, and it's what commands the biggest paychecks. Enterprise Cloud Architecture, the Strategic Technologist. 
The second skill that will put your salary in a different league is enterprise cloud architecture. This isn't about collecting a few cloud certificates. This is about leveling up from being a cloud user to a cloud strategist. Imagine a developer builds a single house. An enterprise cloud architect is the city planner who designs the entire metropolis. They design the power grid, the water systems, the highways, and the emergency services for hundreds of houses to exist together. They make the critical decisions that determine if the city can handle a sudden population boom, survive a natural disaster, and operate without bankrupting the government with outrageous utility bills. They translate the city's goals, growth, safety, and financial health, into a technical blueprint. The value here is massive. Bad cloud architecture is like a city with constant traffic jams and power outages, it's a silent profit killer. We've all heard stories of companies that rush to the cloud and then watch their costs spiral out of control. A great cloud architect can save a company millions a year just through smart design. In a world where one major outage can cost millions, the architect's ability to build a resilient city is like a massive insurance policy. Because of this direct impact on cost, risk, and growth, companies are fighting over a tiny pool of true architects. The demand is just overwhelming, and that's why the salaries are so high. In the US, the average salary for a cloud architect hovers around $145,000 to $150,900, with senior experts commanding well over $270,000. Some data shows averages climbing even higher in industries like finance and telecom, often exceeding $175,000 for experienced architects. Here's how you become one. First, you need an unshakable command of IT fundamentals, networking, databases, security, at a much deeper level than what a standard CS degree covers. This is the physics of city building. Next, you have to specialize. Pick one of the big three, AWS, GCP, or Azure, and go deep. Getting a foundational certification is a good start, but the real learning comes from building. For instance, design a system for a fictional e-commerce site that can handle a massive, unpredictable traffic spike, like a digital Black Friday. Finally, and most critically, develop your business sense. Learn to talk to the mayor and the city council. Study cloud cost management and compliance frameworks. The architects who earn the most are the ones who can sit down with a CFO and justify their designs in dollars and cents. Section 3, Advanced Cybersecurity, The Proactive Defender. The third skill has rocketed from a niche IT job to a top-level business concern, advanced cybersecurity. I'm not talking about installing antivirus software. I'm talking about the proactive, offensive side of security. This is like being a secret agent for your own company. These pros don't just build walls, they think like master thieves. They're paid to legally hack their own companies to find weaknesses before criminals do. A threat hunter is like a detective, quietly canvassing the network for signs of hidden attackers who've already slipped past the alarms. An incident responder is a digital SWAT team, swooping in during a live attack to contain the damage and kick the intruders out. It requires a completely different mindset from software development, one built on paranoia, skepticism, and a relentless desire to figure out how things break. It's almost impossible to overstate the value here. In 2025, a major data breach isn't just a tech problem, it's an extinction-level event. Imagine a bank vault protected by regular security guards. Now imagine that vault is being targeted by elite, state-sponsored spies. You don't want more guards, you want your own team of counter-spies who know all their tricks. As cyber attacks get more sophisticated, Companies get that top-tier security talent isn't a cost, it's an essential investment in their own survival. The problem is, there's a huge talent shortage. This supply and demand crisis is why the salaries are so high. While a general cybersecurity analyst might make around $101,000, specialized roles pay much more. Penetration testers can earn between $97,000 and $141,000 depending on experience. Security architects, who design secure systems from the start, command salaries from $130,000 to over $190,000. These numbers reflect the immense responsibility these pros carry. Here's your roadmap. Start with a rock-solid foundation in networking, Linux, and web applications. You can't defend a city you don't understand. Next, get your hands dirty. Sign up for platforms like Hack the Box or Try Hack Me. These are safe, legal playgrounds where you can practice your lockpicking skills. Learn the tools of the trade, NMAP, Metasploit, and Burp Suite. Third, get certifications that prove you can do the work. The Offensive Security Certified Professional, OSCP, is the gold standard because it's a 24-hour, hands-on exam where you have to actually break into live machines. Finally, 
adopt a mindset of constant learning. In this field, the second you stop learning is the second you become irrelevant. So there you have it, three high-impact skill sets that are pulling in salaries well beyond what a CS degree alone can promise. We talked about the ML Ops engineer, the master chef turning one great recipe into a global fast food empire. We covered the enterprise cloud architect, the city planner designing a resilient and efficient digital metropolis. And we looked at the advanced cybersecurity professional, the secret agent who protects the company from its biggest threats. What do they all have in common? They go beyond just technical tasks. They demand strategic thinking and a sharp focus on business value. A CS degree gives you the raw materials, the knowledge of code and theory. But these skills are about using those materials to build things that create huge, measurable value. In the tech market of 2025 and beyond, companies aren't just looking for coders. They are hunting for strategic problem solvers. By focusing on one of these areas, you stop being a commodity and start becoming an indispensable asset. If this breakdown gave you a better map of where the tech industry is really heading, do me a favor and hit that like button, it makes a huge difference. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on more guides to building a career that's ready for the future. Now, I want to hear from you. In your opinion, what skills are totally undervalued or overvalued in the market right now? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I read every single one and I'm genuinely curious to see what you think. Until next time, keep learning, keep building, and focus on becoming invaluable.